Salvate, my friends, and welcome back to SPQR Productions. Welcome to episode three of Roman Culture, which is a series where we explore commonly overlooked aspects of Roman life that serve as fun and fascinating insights into the everyday activities of the Roman people. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a fascinating piece of Roman cuisine, the fish sauce, which is known as garum. So, with that out of the way, please sit back, relax, and enjoy as we explore this fascinating, but also smelly, topic of Roman history. Garum, a pungent, salty fish sauce that originated in ancient Greece and was heartily adopted by the Romans, was a ubiquitous condiment and crucial element of ancient Roman cuisine. It was made by fermenting fish or fish innards, usually mackerel, mixed with salt in the sun for several weeks to months until the fish was completely broken down into a liquefied form. The process resulted in an intensely flavored, rich, savory sauce that was cherished by the Romans for its ability to add depth, complexity, and the fifth taste known as umami to a wide array of dishes. Used like modern soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce, garum was commonly splashed into soups, stews, and sauces, enhancing flavors and lending a certain indefinable savoriness to the cuisine of the time. However, the role of garum in ancient Roman society extended beyond mere culinary enhancement. Its production, sale, and distribution had significant economic implications. Industrial-scale garum factories, known as kertari, were widespread throughout the Roman Empire, particularly in coastal areas where fresh fish was abundant. Pompeii, for instance, was home to several of these factories, which were remarkably preserved in the aftermath of the Vesuvius eruption. Fish scraps were left to ferment in large pots or jars, exposed to the hot Mediterranean sun. Once the fish had sufficiently broken down into a sauce, it would be strained and then packaged into amphorae, special ceramic vessels used for transporting and storing various products in the ancient world. This industrious production wasn't limited to supplying the local market. Garum was a major export product, shipped across the empire and beyond, reaching even remote provinces. Its vast distribution network, attested by the discovery of amphorae shards across Roman ruins in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, underlines the significant economic role garum played in antiquity. The sauce's ubiquity also had a social dimension. It transcended class boundaries. Both the elite and the common populace enjoyed garum, although there were varying qualities and prices. High-quality garum, made from particular types of fish or specific parts, could be as expensive as the finest wines. It was considered a luxury item, sometimes even used as a form of currency or as gifts. Despite its widespread popularity in Roman times, the art of garum making dwindled with the decline of the Roman Empire. However, this ancient sauce did not entirely fade into oblivion. Its legacy can be found in several modern fish sauces and condiments across various cultures. For example, the Vietnamese nuoc mam, the Filipino patis, and the Italian colatura di alici are modern iterations of garum, demonstrating a culinary tradition that's deeply embedded in human gastronomy. The revival of garum in some contemporary gourmet kitchens, inspired by historical recipes, is also a testament to the enduring allure of this ancient Roman condiment. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.